So dysfunction by design, how the Pennsylvania State House game the system, silence debate, and damage democracy. That may sound a bit severe, but that's only because we're at the beginning of this. By the end, I'm sure you'll agree with me. So does the legislature represent us? Some people think they do, some people think they don't. Uh, I'm gonna present a case that uh, they don't really represent us at all. And the example I'm gonna use is uh, in the last four years, uh, Fair Districting has had a number of legislative efforts that have gone nowhere, despite significant uh, support from many quarters, including, sorry, all right, I'm gonna have to do it this way, excuse me, including more co-sponsors than any other legislation in the sessions, uh, resolutions by 23 counties, 350 municipalities, and this includes about 70% of the population of Pennsylvania. Their regional governments approved redistricting reform, but the bills went nowhere. We had over 100,000 petition signatures, but the bills went nowhere. We had 500 plus supportive letters to the editors and papers across the state, plus scores of editorials and papers across the state supporting redistricting reform and still the bills went nowhere. And over 66% of Pennsylvania citizens support redistricting reform according to an FNM poll and still the bills went nowhere. Matter of fact, they didn't just go nowhere. They were never allowed a floor vote in the House or Senate despite all those co-sponsors, all those resolutions, all those petition signatures, all those letters to the editors and editorials and the overwhelming support of the Pennsylvania citizens, those bills went nowhere, never allowed a vote. So why does that happen? Why no debate? Why no vote? Sorry for the problems here. Well, the problems, speaking of problems, the problems are the rules. The rules govern the process. And the rules are written by the majority party. They make the rules, that makes sense. But the rules give the party leaders complete control over the leg legislative agenda, the legislative process. One committee chair, in fact, one committee chair outweighs all the other members in the House. And in the Senate, the committee chair outweighs all the other members in the Senate. And they also outweigh the will of the people because that one committee chair sets the agenda for the committee. He or she decides what bills will be discussed, what bills will be voted on, what bills will get, get released out of committee. And if the committee chair doesn't want a bill to go anywhere, it doesn't. And also the majority leader, even if the bill gets out of committee, the majority leader or the speaker can derail the legislative process on those bills. They can rule with a whim of iron. They can stop legislation because they don't like the legislator who proposed it. They can do it for ideological reasons. They can do it because they have contributors who don't want that bill to go through and they serve their purpose rather than the public's. And this creates an unchecked power and a dangerous imbalance. And again, these three positions, committee chair, majority leader, or speaker, control the process, control the agenda, and are the reason we want the rules to be reformed. Now, th these same three positions, members of those posi in those positions will often talk about transparency and accountability. Well, it's time to start, stop talking about transparency and accountability and to do something about it. Now, the first thing the legislature does is they vote on the rules for the session. And basically, our legislators surrender their ability, ability to represent us on the first day of the session. First day of the session, House Resolution 1, the rules are introduced. And there's no time for review. Last, uh, last session, it was over 60 pages. They were introduced on the first day of the session, voted on that same day. Nobody reviewed that. There's no public input. There's no even way to have public input on it. And in 2019, before they passed HR 1, they passed HR 2. And what was HR 2? HR 2 prohibited any amendments to HR 1. So before we pass the resolution, the rules, 
let's make sure there's no way to fix them. And by voting for HR1, lawmakers willingly silence their own voices and their ability to represent us. They cede all control to the party leaders. They give it away. They're putting party before people. They're putting party before their own ability to represent us. Is that transparent? Is that accountable? You know, the game is fixed. And again, the problem is the rules. Speakers appoint chairs and demote chairs. The chair decides if a bill gets a hearing or a vote. The chair isn't going to upset the speaker, majority leader, or anybody else. And so he or she is not going to promote bills that aren't popular with the speaker, the majority leader. Yeah, as uh, W.C. Field said in My Little Chickadee, when asked, is this a game of chance? Not the way I play it, no. Not a, not only is it not a game of chance, it's not transparent or accountable. Now, who holds the cards in this fixed game? One representative, and this is just some simple math, the 203 representatives in a house, so one is about 0.5% of PA voters Committee Chair Garth Everett, he didn't run again this time, but uh, ran in 2018. He won his election with 18,000 votes. And that was 80% of the vote in his district. Speaker Brian Cutler was elected with 14,000 votes. And that was 72% of the vote in his district. And Majority Leader Kerry Benninghoff was elected with 17,000 votes, 60% in his district. Now, these three gentlemen, ran the show. Nothing went to a vote without their say-so, without their permission. And they often, you know, point the figure at each other. Well, you know, if it gets out of committee, I think we should have a vote on it. And that's just a way for them to duck responsibility. Legislation they support gets passed. Legislation they're not interested in, despite what the public may want, don't get any action. Now, the public is often asking, you know, why don't they reach across the aisle? Why can't they work together? Why can't they cooperate? Why can't they reach across the aisle and work together? We hear that a lot. We say it ourselves. This might give you an indication. This uh, illustration here is from the Pennsylvania House Commonwealth Flyer, a publication of the, the, uh, the House called Making Law and PA. And the flyer basically states that majority minority party members meet in separate caucus rooms too review bills, decide to support what bills they're going to support, what bills they're not going to support. And this is based on what the party leaders want, not what the public wants. So there's no collaboration or cooperation between the parties. They don't reach across the aisle because there is no aisle. They're in separate rooms. There's no way for the two parties to get together and work together. It's discouraged under the rules in Pennsylvania. And that's one of the big problems we have. 85% of successful bills in Pennsylvania are introduced by the majority party. Majority party picks committee chairs. Committee chairs advance partisan party agenda. And this would happen if the Democrats were in control too under the same rules. You're not going to support legislation unless it goes along with your party's ideology. That's why there's no cooperation. That's why you can't get the best ideas from the Democrats and the best ideas from the Republicans and work together. Everybody thinks that they have a lock on the best ideas and the public knows it's true. And we're, we're increasingly becoming a country of moderates governed by the extremes. Now you think a legislator, a legislature would legislate, not so much in ours. 2013, 2014, there were over 5,000 bills proposed. 381 passed, less than 7%. 2015, 2016, nearly 4,000 bills were introduced. 214 passed, less than 6%. Over 93% of the bills in Pennsylvania, in the Pennsylvania legislature, go nowhere. Now, our full time legislature is the largest legislature full-time legislature in the country. It's one of the most expensive legislatures in the country, and it is 
the least productive legislature in the country. And this is a trifecta of, of disaster. We're paying more and we're getting less. They aren't representing us. And it's not just redistricting reform. 75% of proposed bills never get a vote in committee. Then those 30% of the 2017, 2018 House bills that got out of committee never got a floor vote. 50% of the bills that pass one chamber don't get a vote in the other chamber. And it's all because of the rules. We have to reform the rules unless this changes. Unless this changes, nothing changes. The rules control the process. The leaders draw districts, distorted districts protect incumbents, then a majority caucus leaders control the rules and the unfair rules block reform and we are in this cycle of dysfunction and around and around we go. And it doesn't have to be this way. It isn't this way in every legislature across the country. The map here shows and the darker areas, the darker purple areas are those states that have good processes, better processes for collaboration and working together in policy making. Uh, you notice Colorado has 100% ranking, Pennsylvania has zero. According to the Fair Vote and Bipartisan Policy Center, uh, Centers, Pennsylvania doesn't have any collaborative processes. There's no way for the Republicans and the Democrats to work together to compromise, to pass legislation that the public wants. Four years, Fair District PA's popular legislation for redistricting reform went nowhere. Four years in the Pennsylvania legislature. Colorado passed redistricting reform in 28 days. The bills were introduced in April 2018. They were passed unanimously, unanimously in May. And then Voter referendum in November, 71% of the vote. Very popular legislation, the people wanted it, and this legislature delivered. Pennsylvania, we have similar numbers. We're almost 71% of the public supports redistricting in Pennsylvania, but our legislature ignores it. They don't care what the people think. Committees where bills go to die. <laughs> The chairs, again, control the committees. Most bills are ignored. Chairs send one bill to another committee to die. Now imagine a bill getting some movement in a committee. The chair could just reassign it. And this gives the impression of something happening. Oh, we thought it was better controlled than that committee over there. So we sent it over there. I can't help it if they didn't do anything. Not my fault. Not transparent, not accountable. And there are other ways to hammer democracy too. Majority leader can deny a vote to any bill reported out of committee. So even if a bill gets out of committee, it still gets killed. Bills passed in one chamber can be denied and are denied a vote by majority leader in the other chamber. It's not transparent or accountable. And issues ignored. I mean, this is a serious issue. Pennsylvania has a serious issue with lead poisoning, forgive me. And there are 18 Pennsylvania cities that have a higher level of lead exposure than Flint, Michigan, 18 cities. And this map shows, and those, uh, the dark red are those counties that have serious lead point, not serious, higher levels of lead, uh, blood levels in, in childhood and children's blood than the rest of the state. And the legislature does nothing about it. Now, in, in 2015, 2016, there were proposals for lead bills, including uh, uh, lead testing for institutions, serving younger children, lead abatement assistance task force to study the lead problem in Pennsylvania, mandated lead testing as part of real estate sales and Pennsylvania sales. Those bills were introduced in 2015, 2016. None of them got a vote. None of them got a vote. Those same bills are introduced in 2019, 2020, I'm sorry, 2017, 2018, none got a committee vote, couldn't get out of committee. 2019, 2020, bills were introduced again, same bills are introduced again, none got a vote out of committee. 
And what, what I want to know is, who is in favor? Who is in favor of lead poisoning? That we can't get bills out of committee. Now, it's not that they're completely useless. The, the legislature in 2019, the House did pass a resolution. They passed a resolution, meaningless, but they passed a resolution to recognize Lead Awareness Week. That resolution passed a month after the proposed week had passed. The legislature can't get the lead out. And again, who watching this webinar is in favor of lead poisoning? Doesn't have to be this way. It's the rules. If we can change the rules, we can change this process. Some rules changes that might make a difference, and these are just suggestions. Uh, you know, guarantee a vote in committee for bills with strong bipartisan support. Why not? They have strong bipartisan support. You can define that by X number of committee members from each party support it. Give it a vote. We're not saying automatically pass stuff. We're saying give them a vote. Let's find out where our legislators stand. They are ducking responsibility by never voting on these issues that are important to us. Guarantee a vote in the chamber floor for strong bipartisan bills that get voted out of committee. Again, once it gets voted out of committee, speaker can make sure it never gets voted on. Bills of strong bipartisan support that pass one chamber should get a vote in the other chamber. Why not? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with the What's wrong with our representatives standing up and voting on these issues that are important to us? Legislative leaders aren't the least bit motivated to decrease their power. The only way it will change is if voters demand it. After all, this is a democracy. That's stirring words. That's wonderful. Uh, 1996, Keystone Capers' opinion. Uh, the voters have to demand this change. It's been too long. It's been too long. No matter what issue is important to you, whether it's, it's you know, property tax reform, health care, uh, internet access in rural areas, whatever issue is important to you, if we don't have a responsive legislature, it doesn't matter. Nothing changes unless this changes. Good bills de deserve a vote. Reform the rules. And what I hope you do with this information before we get into some questions, is I hope you talk to your legislators, your local legislators. And, and one of the things I would, I would love to have you ask them and, and, and let fair districts know what their response is, ask them why on the first day of the session, they would willingly vote to strip themselves of any power they have to represent us by voting for the rules as they're currently structured. Why would they do that? 